as tough and competitive a collection of strength athletes that can be found. These six men have the necessary pedigree and credentials. Two will emerge from this group and reach the final. But they'll certainly need to pay a price. That's why it's called the Group of Death. The Metric's World's Strongest Man is next. Welcome to the ultimate test of strength, the Metrics World's Strongest Man, as Group 3 begins their qualifying journey. We're in Charleston, the capital of West Virginia. The first of six events that confronts them will be the Lodi Race. Hello, everyone. Todd Harris along with Bill Kazmaier. Kaz, this event will be a punishing one indeed. It sure will be, Todd. You'll need to run through ankle-deep sand while carrying insanely heavy objects. Two barrels weighing 231 pounds and two sacks weighing 275 pounds have to be moved 12 meters. That'll surely test the desire of these strong men. Now to the Canada. first of two heats. This is J.F. Caron from Quebec City in Canada. He is a Wolves' strongest man rookie. Next to him is Elbrus Nigmatulin of Russia. Now he's a familiar face. This is his fourth appearance. Remember, Elbrus reached the final in 2005. And then there's Yanni Virtin, the world's strongest man champion from 2000 when we were in Sun City. He is still among the elite. Just remember, Todd, it's a long race, and the weights just keep Thank getting heavier. Position. They start off with the 231-pound kegs. Elbrus Nigmatoon with a slight lead in the middle. J.F. Carone out in front. Look at the speed from the big man from Canada. He's sure moving. Elbrus struggled with getting the keg on its end on top of the platform. Carone in the far lane out in front. Yanni Virtsen in the green. So from 231 pounds, Kaz, they move on to the sacks. These are 275. Getting a handle on this thing is the most important. Shouldering it is optimum. Yanni's using a lot of energy trying to carry it by his hips. So it's Corone and Yanni Virtanen in neck and neck as they go to the last apparatus. This sack, 275 pounds. Elvis Nigmatuno is now caught up to JF Corone, but it's all Yanni Virtanen of Finland. And he does it. Stopping the clock at 53.14 seconds, so he wins heat number one. And look at this, Elvis Nigmatuna of Russia with a strong comeback. Elvis had a little problem with his first barrel, but he didn't panic and stayed focused on his own race. Good job by the Russian. And it looks like J.F. Caron's gonna run out of time. Your winner in heat number one, that man, Yanni Virtan in four objects in a time of 53.14 seconds. Elbrus Nigmatulin, a respectable Yanni time, just over one minute, currently in second place man. in the loading race. And we move on to the second of two heats in the loading race for qualifying group two. At the age of 23, Kevin Nee of Arizona is making his fourth World's Strongest Man appearance. He's battled back from a bicep injury he suffered earlier in the year. This is Tarmo Mitt. Now, he knows something about bicep injuries. He tore one last year in the final. The biggest stony is 100%. And here's Terry Hollins of England. Finished third in 2007 with love take a couple steps up the podium this year. Terry Holland's off to a good start. Remember the mark to beat, Kaz, 53.14 seconds. Those kegs, 231 pounds. They seem to be pacing themselves back. I'd like to move a little bit quicker and save a second on each of those runbacks. There's Kevin Nee, the American in the black in the far lane. Terry Holland's First to the sacks. Now those sacks weigh 275 pounds apiece. I like where Tarmo Mitz got it. Terry's kind of low with the sack. It just seems to pull the energy out of you if you carry it in an awkward position, like Kevin D's doing right now. Terry Hollins in the white, Tarmo Mitt in the red. It all comes down to this. Can they beat the 53.14 put up by Yanni Virtanen? They're not going to get that mark, but points are very valuable. And it's Tarmo Mitt who will get second place at 54.29 seconds. Kevin Nee, though, still has a little time on the clock, Bill, but he looks spent. At this point, he's just exhausted. But it's pride that makes him want to carry this sack and load it, finish the race. Kevin Nee runs out of time, but still places the sack. Your winner in heat number two is Tarmo Mitt. 54.29, good enough for second place. Terry Holland's a strong performance as well. He grabs third. 
And the veteran Yanni Virten refuses to get too excited, but he does win the loading race. The victory is worth six very important points to Yanni. Three other men were credited with all four objects, and it was Mitt Collins and Nigma Tulin finishing second, third, and fourth respectively. Kevin Nee can't afford fifth place results in a group this strong. And we move on to the banks of the Kanawha River for an old mainstay, the keg toss. And let's show you what happened in this event. In sixth place from Canada, J.F. Caron, four tosses in a time of one minute and 15 seconds. And then there was a three-way tie for third. Six tosses each for Elbrus Digmatulin of Russia, Yanni Virchen of Finland, and Terry Hollins of England. In second place, Kevin Nee of the USA, eight tosses in an amazing time of 34.9 seconds. But winning the keg toss in group number three, it was the man from Estonia, Tarmo Mick, eight kegs in 28.47 seconds. So it's Tarmo Mitt, the giant from Estonia, winning the keg toss. In second place, Kevin Nee of the U.S. also got all eight. Holland's from England. Finland's Virtanen and Russia's Nigma Tulin each had six kegs to share third. The Canadian Caron was sixth. With 11 points, Mitt leads the way after two events. Virtanen is second with nine points. Holland's is in third. Nee and Nigma Tulin are tied for fourth, while Caron is alone in sixth. Qualifying group three moves to its third event, the truck pole. Let's bring you up to speed on what has happened so far. Now, it's not easy moving 50,000 pounds. The fact that JF Caron can certainly confirm the Canadian rookie was only able to move the truck like 75 meters. American Kevin Nee was a finalist a year ago, but he won't be making it back with too many more efforts like this. He was credited with a distance of 8.7 meters. Elbrus Nigmatulin of Russia covered the entire 20-meter course. He fought his way to the line and stopped the clock at 52.91 seconds and is the current leader. And that takes us to Tarmo Mitt, our winner of the keg toss, leader after two events overall in the group of death. Todd Tarmo's trademark is steadiness. He's basically mistake-free, event after event, year after year. I'm not impressed with his start here, though. He's a little bit high. He's having a real difficulty getting this thing going. Remember, he has got 75 seconds to cover the 20-meter course. And folks, that is 25 tons that the big Estonian is being dwarfed by. Todd, you see him dropping his body, and applying his power to that big truck. It's really starting to move now. Time to beat 52.91 seconds put up by the Russian Elbrus Nigmatulin. Five meters to go, Kaz, looking pretty good. It was that start that was tough. He's got a great finish going. And Tarmo Mitt will move into the lead. 45.41 seconds for the Estonian. For he the becomes Estonia, the current Tarmo leader in the truck pole. Todd, I don't like the way Tarmo started. He was really high and it cost him a lot of time. But by the middle of the race, he got down and drove hard and had an awesome finish. Just look at him. Pull that truck over the line. So that will take us to Finland's Yanni Virtanen. Now, Yanni is in second place overall, and he's made it known that this could be his final World's Strongest Man appearance. I like Yanni's leverage. Really laid out and pulling. Legs almost extended all the way, but he's not popping the knees back and putting the power to. The baby steps don't give the great power. Kaz, you talk about an athlete's tilt. I think Yanni's got it to the max right now. What's he doing wrong? The little steps, he's not driving with light power. He doesn't have massive legs with a ton of power there to rely on. So he really has to lean over and use his height and pull hard with his arms to get the truck moving. Starting to get a bit of momentum here. He's got 20 meters to cover, and he's got 25 tons that he's strapped to. Now he's got a quick pace going. This is where his athleticism really comes in. Eyes closed with a grimace. He knows where the rope is. He's pulling really hard and giving a 100% effort. He does not surpass the time put up by Tarmo Mitt, but it's very close, 48.12 seconds. So Yanni Virtanen moves into second place. 
Todd, you already had a really slow start and a couple of stumbles. And it's those stumbles that probably kept him from catching Tarmo Mitt. But all in all, he's got to be happy with his performance. From England, Terry Holland. And that takes us to Terry Holland, the final athlete in the truck pole. The Englishman enters the truck pole in third place overall. Terry will have his sights set ready? on Tarmo Mitt's time of 45.41 seconds. Todd Terry's proven to be one of the best pullers over the last several years. But he's dropped about 20 pounds, now weighing 367. Still plenty of body mass to get this big truck moving. That was 25 tons. And there you see the time to beat. 45.41 seconds put up by Tarmo Mitt. Wow. I like how he works that rope, Todd. Long, stretchy, hard pulls and plenty of leg drive. Look at the way that crowd is up. Snaps that knee back. He's putting power to this truck. Terry Hollins of England is fast approaching the finish line, and this could be the winning time. It is 38.37 seconds. Terry Hollins wins the truck pole. Just under 40 seconds for Terry Hollins. He wins group three truck pole. Terry kept his body low. He powered his way to the line with fast hands and, as Kaz said, quick feet. Terry Holland's 38.37 seconds was over seven seconds faster than that of Tarmo Mitt, who was the runner-up. Yanni Virtanen picked up third place, and Elbrus Nigmatulin was fourth. After three of six events, Mitt tops the group with 16 points. Hollins and Virtanen share second with 13 points. Nigmatulin is in fourth, and Nee is fifth. Remember, only the top two will move on to the final. Only two men from group three will qualify for the final, a place five of them have been before. The battle resumes when we come back to the Metrics World's Strongest Man. To the ultimate test of strength in strength athletics, this is the Metrics World's Strongest Man. We're at the Capitol Complex in Charleston, West Virginia, as Group 3 concludes their qualification round. And the fourth of six challenges facing this group is one of the truest and time-honored valuations of strength. It's the deadlift. Todd, the deadlift begins with 585 pounds, and with each rep, additional weight is added to the apparatus. At 800 pounds, the seventh and final repetition is a real monster. Now, the deadlift wasn't too kind to the champion from 2000, Yanni Virtanen. He managed to lock out the three repetitions in 14.35 seconds before calling it quits on the 685-pound rep number four. Terry Hollins of England is tied for second place after three events. This has always been a good event for Terry. Although he's six foot six and it doesn't favor him, you can see how far he's got to pull it from the ground all the way to lockout. Ready? Ready? Lift! Down! Starting weight 585 pounds, and from there, Kaz, it just gets more and more excruciating. I like his technique. He's strong and he doesn't over pull the weight. If the referee says put it down and he's straight, that's enough. Bit of a strain there at 720 pounds, which is understandable. Now he goes up to 750 pounds. Wow, that's a bit of a surprise, Kaz. He looks strong. I thought he was ready for another. Five reps at a time of 20.07 seconds for Terry Hollins. Up next, J.F. Caron, the Canadian, will have his opportunity, and it's been a real eye-opener to this point for the rookie, Kaz. Yeah, Todd, it's been a real struggle for him thus far, but he's known in Canada as one of the best deadlifters with a really strong back. Your attention, please, from Canada, J.F. Caron. 26 years of age, J.F. Caron from Quebec City. Ready? And lift! Remember, the starting weight has 585 pounds. We'll find out just how good he is as we go to this next weight, 620, and he makes it look easy. Pretty simple for him. It's just a matter, as a rookie, of getting some familiarity in the first couple of reps. Because when it gets heavy, it gets hard real fast. And he tosses the eyewear. And he's successful at 720 pounds. Now, this is a big one, 750. Got to get the hips down. He's all back. Down. And he locks it out, 750 pounds. This is it, the final repetition. This is for 800 pounds and the lead. 
It's a good thing he has a strong back. He used it in the last one. Let's see if he can use all back this time. He's setting those hips awfully high. J.F. Cron unsuccessful, but he does have a very strong performance. He is our current leader, six reps, 35.23 seconds. From Russia, Elbrus Nigmatulin. This is Elbrus Nigmatulin of Russia. The one-time finalist is in fourth place in the overall standings. Elbrus is a real pro. He puts in a solid effort every time out. His body is perfect for this lift. Good-sized legs, okay. strong hips, and a really right. powerful back. This weight's 620 pounds. He is successful. This is 650. He really seems to be using a lot of his back. Maybe there's a great deal of fatigue from previous events. Successful at 685. This is a big one, Cass. 720. I'm not seeing the leg drive, Todd. He's got to put him in there. Extremely vertical is Elbrus Nigmatulin. Still has time. Remember the mark to beat. Six reps in 35.23 seconds. Put it by J.F. Crone. He won't get that. And Elbrus Nigmatulin has had enough. Five repetitions in the time of 25.33 seconds. That puts him into third place. Todd, you can see right here. Although he's built perfectly for the deadlift, he's not utilizing his leg power. He's relying on his low back for the whole move. Elbrus would have got a couple more reps if he would have utilized good technique. From the nation of Estonia, Tarmo Mit. And that takes us to our overall leader in the group, Tarmo Mit of Estonia. Tarmo's a taller guy, Kaz. He's really not going to enjoy this deadlift, is he? It certainly doesn't favor a big man. He's got a long way to pull the bar. The only way he can do well here is to keep his hips down, utilize his legs, synchronize his back, and shove his hips forward all at once. Down! So far, so good, and he's successful at 685 pounds. Cash, you talk about the travel, the distance he has to go. It's brutal for Tarmo, and I think he's had enough. Surely some of the past events have taken something out of him. Four repetitions at a time of 16.31 seconds for your current leader in the group, Tarmo Mitt. Todd Tarmo pulled four easy reps. I think he was conserving his energy, knowing that he's the leader in this group. Well, the final man in the deadlift the is USA. Kevin Nee of Arizona. Nee. He's in fifth place overall. Now, Kevin needs a good showing here if he wants to contend for one of the two spots in the final. The deadlift should allow him to do exactly that, Todd. Kevin is world class in this event. Are you ready? What? Well, this Down. is it. Kevin Nee needs to get six repetitions at under 35.23 seconds. And the first two pass look easy. Down. He's smoking him, Todd. Wow. This is for 720 pounds. He's got one of the strongest backs I've ever seen, Todd. Down. And with that lift, Kevin Nee has done it. Now he doesn't need the seventh rep. The win is already his. 800 proves to be too much. Kevin Nee, your winner in the deadlift. Six reps in a time of 24.28 seconds. Kevin obviously knew the stakes, knew that a win in the deadlift was a must. Tremendous performance for the man from Arizona. Kevin is the winner of the deadlift with six lifts in 24.28 seconds. J.F. Carone in his best finish is second. Terry Hollins was third. Then it's Nigma Tulin Mitt and Virtanen. Tarmo Mitt remains the leader after four of six events. Terry Hollins is one point back in second. Kevin Nee joins Yanni Virtanen in a third place tie. Nick Matun on his fifth, while Carone is sixth. And we're at the University of Charleston for the Axel Press, the fifth of six tests of strength facing group number three. Let's bring you up to speed on what has happened so far. And with just two athletes remaining, currently in fourth, J.F. Carone, four lifts. Currently in third, Yanni Virtin into Finland, five lifts. Checking in at second with six lifts, Elbrus Nigmatulin of Russia. And in first place, Tarmo Mitt, Estonia. He gets nine lifts. Well, Terry's first job is to become one of the two guys from this group to qualify for the final. He's currently second overall. 
he can solidify his position here in the axle press. Kevin Nee won the deadlift and is probably the favorite in this event as well, and he really does need every point possible if he wants to make the final. Kevin's got cannonball deltoids. As you can see right there, he overpowered the first one. Great form. Look at Terry Hollins also understands the apparatus. I like the way Terry uses the split. Drops his whole body underneath. Keep it up, Kevin. Guys, what's amazing is that's 300 pounds that they are taking off the ground, going overhead, and then, like you said, having to settle it when it comes back down. It's a tough event. Kevin Nee impresses me with his clean, and he's got just tremendous power up overhead. The mark to beat is nine repetitions put up by the current overall leader in this group, Tarmo Mitt. Terry Holland's currently in second place overall, and Kevin Nee, the American, trying to get back into contention. Remember, only two men out of this group advanced to the final, and Kevin Nee is one repetition away from tying Tarmo Mitt for the lead. He knows he needs it. He's really a tough young guy. And he's done it. So Kevin Nee is in a tie with Tarmo Mitt for the lead. But one more could make all the difference in the world, and he's just unable to lock it out. It sure was close, Todd. Terry Hollins tied for third place with six repetitions. But Kevin Nee tied for first place. He gets nine reps and oh so close to ten. Victory in the axle press is shared by Estonia's Tarmo Mid and American Kevin Nee, courtesy of their nine reps. Hollins of England and Russia's Nigma Tulin tied for third with six reps. Tarmo Mid is the leader with 23 and a half points. Terry Hollins, three points back. The only other man with a realistic chance to advance is American Kevin Nee, currently in third place. And we move on to our next event as Group 2 completes their qualifying round with the Atlas Stones. And two men have already wrapped things up. J.F. Caron lifted the first four stones, but the 400-pounder was too much for the Canadian newcomer. Veteran Elbrus Nigma Tunnel of Russia was able to place all five stones up in a time of 29.83 seconds. He is the current leader in the Atlas Stones. Before we get to the next pair, a quick look at the overall standings. Any of the top four can advance and claim the two spots in the final. Mitt and Hollins control their destinies. Nee needs help, and Virtanen needs a miracle. So Tarmo Mitt's the overall in leader the and is guaranteed a place Estonia, in the final with at least Tarmo a fourth place Mitt. finish here. But he could finish lower depending on Nee and Hollins in the next heat. For Yanni Virtanen, it's simple. He must win the Atlas Stones to have any chance of and moving on. Even then, he'd have to have Hollins and me make serious mistakes. The odds aren't with the former champ. Todd, both of these guys have spent plenty of time around the Stones, and either one is capable of putting up a great time. Tarmo Mitt in the red, Yanni Virtanen in the green. Tall pedestals, but both of these guys have superior height. Mitt's off to a great start. He's got tremendous overall body power, and is just dominating these Stones. Onto the fourth stone, that's 310 pounds, and Tarmo Mid onto the fifth stone, which is 400 pounds. And he's done it. Tarmo Mid stops the clock at 23.22 seconds, so he has clinched a spot in the final. And Yanni Virton, unfortunately, this will not be his year. Unbelievable effort. So Tarmo Min is in with that impressive time of 23.22 seconds. Yanni Virtanen will not reach the final for a third straight year. Todd, I didn't think 400 pounds could be moved so easily. But if you're six foot five and almost 350 pounds, I guess it's not so hard after all. From England, welcome Well, there's only one transfer position left, and it will go to the winner of this heat. Terry Hollins of England is looking to get back to the final for the third straight year, and Kevin Nee of the United States seeks a second consecutive appearance. Todd, this is the way it should be settled. Head to head, winner moves on, loser packs up and goes home. Well, the competition is simple. Whoever wins this heat moves on to the final, and right now, Terry Hollins and Kevin Nee both look extremely motivated. Terry Hollins has a slight lead, though, right now. Kevin's got to get going if he wants to get back in it. 
the fourth stone, 310 pounds, and Terry Hollins is now on to the fifth stone, which is 400 pounds. Kevin looks out of the corner of his eye and sees that he's in trouble, and Terry Hollins has done it. 21.56 seconds effectively knocking out Kevin Nee from the final. Another perfect 10 from Terry Hollins and Kevin Nee. He knew exactly what, what he had to do, and the big man from England went out there and did it. Kevin Nee, unfortunately, his qualifying run has ended. He will not move on to the finals. Kevin Nee, unfortunately, was a step behind the entire way. Once Terry Hollins placed that fifth stone on the platform, it was all over. Terry Hollins got the win in the Atlas Stones, but the big prize is the trip to the final that came with it. Tarmo Mint was second, Kevin Nee was third, and fourth was Elvis Bigmatulin. Tarmo Mint wins the group with Terry Hollins finishing second. We'll see both men in the final. Kevin Nee comes up just short in third place. Nigma Tulin, Virtanen, and Corone finish fourth, fifth, and sixth, respectively. So long from Charleston, West Virginia, in the United States of America. For Bill Kazmaier, I'm Todd Harris. We'll see you next time on the Metrics World's Strongest Man.